Jessica Thurman from Sabre Holdings. Um, and if you were in the Executive Summit, some of you might have heard from her, so welcome. And Laura Reeves, so if you are a dimensional modeler, hopefully you've read her books um, and are taking her class. And then Elizabeth Garvey from Allstate Solutions, who we also just roped in last week. <laughs> Allstate Insurance, so thank you very much. So um, what I, I'm a tough taskmaster. I like to stick to a schedule. If you take my bake off, I use the beeper. We're not using a beeper okay. tonight. <laughs> no gongs. Um, but in talking to people leading up to this, it sounded like where people struggle somewhat the most is on that work-life balance. And what's hard about this, this isn't just a female issue. It's also not a mom issue. I have a friend who's single. She's a consultant in high tech. She gets sent on every trip because she has no children. But she just wants to work out and own a, a dog and a cat. So, you know, it's, it's not just a mom issue, but clearly some of the headlines of late, the CEO at um, Yahoo, Marissa Meyer, thinking she can just have her baby and do her conference calls in the hospital room, at first I laughed, and then I felt bad for her. So um, we'll talk about that whole having it all and what are the hard choices. On your table, there's some recommended reads and additional resources that um, we all have pulled together, articles that have helped us, some stats. I also will write about this afterwards and provide links on the blog, which is on the TDWI website. And hopefully, uh, Stephen Soye in the back, um, if you read his work, will also write about it. So we're going to spend about 35 minutes on that topic. And I'll try and ask some questions. And then you can ask any of the panelists questions about do they have it all or the hard choices. Then we'll go into where do we stand with women in IT and why is it declining. <laughs> and then we'll end with the pay gap. What is it overall? Is it better or worse in BI? And what can you do about it to close it? And then for half an hour, we'll all kind of, we'd love your input on what's working. Do we repeat this event? What are some of the key takeaways or things that you learned or that you want to make sure we capture and share beyond this? So with that, I'd like um, each of our panelists to tell a little bit how they started in BI, how long they've been in BI, and then uh, we'll come back to, do you have it all? So Teresa. Um, as Cindy mentioned, I'm Teresa Marvin. I um, am a senior BI developer in the Business Intelligence Center of Excellence at Fannie Mae. I've been in BI for about 15 years. Um, I came into BI as a SAS programmer. I had a stint as a statistician at the Census Bureau, ended up at Fannie Mae, and have been there um, for about 12 years. I actually don't live in the D.C. area where our offices are located, and one of the things I'll be talking about is how my work location in Michigan near my family is one of the things that helps me juggle having uh, both grandmothers close. Ooh, nice. <laughs> nice. Um, gosh, I built my first data warehouse in 1988. <laughs> no, we didn't. We called it a big honking database. Um, I worked for a large consulting company. I was fortunate enough the first day that I worked there to uh, be invited, put that in quotes, be invited to a course that was being given on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. There's a little bit of work-life balance right there. And it was being given by an unknown guy. This was in 1987, an unknown guy by the name of Bill Inman. Nobody knew what the heck he was talking about. Atomic databases department, what, what is this stuff? I actually thought it was pretty cool. Of my class of 13 people, I'm the only one that actually went up to him afterwards and said, I want to do this. I don't know how and I don't know where, but I want to do this. So my first project was in 1988. I formed my company because, we'll talk about this, I didn't like working for somebody else. <laughs> Just an independent cuss from the day one. I formed my company when I was six months pregnant with my daughter. I think it was the hormones. <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> but that was in 1992, and I haven't looked back. I think I'm probably the oldest, uh, I don't know, you might have me beat. No, 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 not age-wise. The oldest BI um, practitioner, not old in age, but having done it the most. I think you might have me beat, though. Yeah, I think you've been doing it longer than I have. 
Uh, so that's my story. I uh, never did look back. I've, I've had uh, just a heck of a ride for uh, 26 years, whatever it is, something like that. So that's me. Can you hear me? Is it on? Okay. Hi, my name is Jessica Third at Sabre. Um, I've been at Sabre actually coming up on 25 years, so I've had a long career there. We were previously owned by American Airlines, so my background is actually in engineering, industrial engineering, and I got my start at American Airlines really doing studies really all across the airline about optimizing primarily people, resources. Um, and then I, I gradually moved over to the Sabre, more of the IT part of the company and worked in, in many different capacities. About in 2003, we, we began to bring up our data warehouse. At the time, I was involved in, in marketing, and we were beginning to figure out what we were going to do with this data warehouse then. And um, I also became just fascinated with how we were going to use it and kind of the potential of the data we could capture and have been involved really over, in many capacities over the last 10 years. And uh, we still feel like we have so much more to do and so much more uh, possibility at Sabre with the data. So that's a little of my story. And I'm Laura Reeves, and I have been at this longer than Claudia, it turns out. Um, I was, that's the proper way of I, saying I, it. I, I built my first warehouse environment in 1986, but I started when I was eight. <laughs> <laughs> but I, um, I was working at the time for Chevrolet, which is where all good kids who grew up in Michigan go to work for an auto company. And um, I really got excited about a pilot project we were working on with this crazy new company with really cool technology where they had something called a mouse and an icon. And uh, it was the first time people saw things like that. So in 1986, I left Chevrolet and moved across the world to Chicago. Um, and uh, joined Metaphor, and that's where I met um, many esteemed people in our field. I worked with Ralph Kimball, Margie Ross, and Warren Thornthwaite, and just dozens of other really great people. And I worked there for 10 years uh, in the consulting arena, uh, helping people build and, and implement solutions, and was there until IBM shut us down as a separate company. And we went out and looked at the industry and said, gosh, I really like this, what should I do next? And so quite a few of us left metaphor, and we joined a new startup um, called MicroStrategy. And that was an interesting experience. Um, and brilliant people, we always joke that we raised the average IQ and lowered, um, uh, we ra uh, raised the average age and lowered the average IQ, because they were brilliant and they were very young. It was kind of like working for a fraternity at the time. Um, so we, we only stayed there about nine months, and I actually thank them, because it was such a mismatch personally that it gave me the courage to start my own firm. And so um, I started Starsoft Solutions with Paul Kautza, who's right now um, serving as the Director of Education here at TDWI. And that way I can uh, work on the pieces that I like most um, and going out and helping people build these things. And it, uh, working for myself has certainly been very valuable for me when it comes to work life. We'll talk more. Hopefully this works. Um, okay, so I think I am the BI pup of the panel, um, having only about three and a half years now of experience in the BI space. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Elizabeth Garvey. I work for Allstate Insurance Company, and actually, my career started at a large consulting firm, and because of a life choice um, and balance between having an 18-month-old at the time and knowing that there would probably be another along the way sometime, decided to take that jump from consulting into corporate America. And I've been at Allstate now for about 10 years, almost 11 actually here in March. Um, I came into the BI space after having the um, opportunity to run our standardized process implementation for application delivery organization in IT and landed in BI to run our BI and analytics practice, which is a great experience over the past three years and recently um, towards the end of last year, was asked to lead efforts to stand up enterprise data governance and data quality. So I've had the opportunity to work very closely over the past six months or so with our newly named chief data officer to really drive change around um, looking at our data from a quality and a governance standpoint. So you'd think large company, 80 plus years of history, would have all that stuff figured out. Well, we, we don't, which is nice. It's a great opportunity. Um, and you know, a lot of challenges with that. So um, it's nice to be here and look forward to um, tonight's conversation. Great, thanks Elizabeth. And I, um, I started in BI as the Lotus 123 macro queen. 
<laughs> so you can guess my age with that. <laughs> so many of you were. You were probably Excel queens, though. Um, and started in industry at Dow Chemical and then worked for uh, Deloitte & Touche, who's highly rated um, by Working Mother magazines, but um, also started my own business. Really not, I'm very risk averse, um, but felt like it gave me a better work-life balance. So that, you know, I've been doing that 10 years now. So when we talk about juggling, um, I think it's important to think about all the things you juggle. Our career, our work is one thing. Family, if you have it, could be a spouse, could be children. Health, fitness, I think this is what usually falls off the list. Community, so a lot of my friends think I have it all. You'll hear the hard choices, though. They think I have it all. I love my job. I love what I do. I'm madly in love with my husband. Um, 18 years, I have two kids, 16 and 14, and they still talk to me. My son still tells me he loves me. <laughs> um, so it seems perfect. I work out three times a week. I do work with um, homeless people. You hate me. You haven't heard my hard choices yet. <laughs> so yeah, people think I have it all. Um, do, what are you juggling? Yeah, I, I get it too. I, I have six children. Oh, yeah, I knew, yeah. But you invited me before you knew I had six children. So, yeah, um, I have, they range in age from 13. I have a 13 year old daughter, 12 year old son, um, 10 year old twin girls. Um, and then we adopted two little boys from Guatemala who are six and eight. So, everyone says that to me too. But you know, you have it all. I also coach, I also coach three basketball teams and run a youth. Um, basketball program for girls, but that's just in the winter months. So, um, but I have, you know, I have this great support system of family, which is what I mentioned at the beginning. Um, my husband is awesome. I'm madly in love with my husband too. He's, I've been with him since I was 17. He supported my career, you know, from start to finish, you know, not finish, but from, from the beginning. Um, and, um, you know, working uh, in a remote location where my family is all there, I have a ton of help from grandparents and, and stuff. But for me, um, you know, my hardships definitely come in the way of uh, friendships. I don't have a lot of time for, for friends, and sometimes I really miss that. And then the health and, and exercise. I mean, I, I try to work out, not during basketball season. I don't get, get um, <laughs> yeah, it's not the same as, you know, uh, you know hour long. But, but, yeah, so that's a little bit about what I'm juggling. I'm feeling very inadequate. <laughs> I have one kid. Okay, Claudia has written how many books? Five. It's all relative, right? Yeah. Uh, do you have a husband? Almost 26 years. I do still love him, which <laughs> I'm going to keep him around for a while. <laughs> there you go, Paul. Um, my daughter is now 20. Oh, dear God, she's actually starting to speak to me again. They do grow out of it, I found out. Um, challenges, yeah, I try to work out. I'm not as good as you are, Cindy. I work out <clears throat> when I get a chance. It's usually not when I'm traveling, which I, don't, I need to talk to you about how you do that. Uh, it's, it's hard. It's really hard. Uh, I think the biggest um, challenge in my life is the fact that I do have a career that causes me to travel and travel a lot which means that my husband has been the stay-at-home parent, really reversal of a paradigm there. A lot of things are um, different when you travel and your husband stays at home. Um, I know that I personally have missed an awful lot of uh, plays that my daughter was in, some of the choir uh, recitals that she was in, and a few other things that, that were just heartbreaking to me. But Unfortunately, my calendar is filled up about six to eight months in advance, and hers fills up like the day before. <laughs> so, so unfortunately, there, there are a lot of things that, that I miss. There are a lot of things that I also was able to do with her that I couldn't have done if I hadn't had the job that I have. She has been a world traveler since she was two and a half. That kid doesn't know. This is the other thing. Because I travel so much, I get upgraded a lot. I don't think she knows what an economy seat is. Now, I hate her. 
Hi, I'm Jessica. I've also been uh, married 22 years. I have two kids, two boys at 14 and 11. We also have a puppy and a guinea pig, new additions to the juggling. Um, so I, I would say, yeah, I, I work out almost uh, probably five or six days a week, but one of my hard choices, too, to get up very, very early in the morning. Um, I would say I'll, I also, you know, challenge with how do you fit it all in with friends and other activities, too. Um, so always a challenge to balance it all. <laughs> Well, um, I think I am showing my age. I've been married 27 years now um, to the same guy, so <laughs> not to different people. And he sometimes, he has a wicked sense of humor. He'll introduce me as his first wife. And like, I, we're still married, but um, I have uh, three children. Uh, my oldest is 23 and has his first job and moved out uh, right after Christmas, so that's very exciting. Graduated from, you know, from college in May and got his job, so that's exciting. Uh, I have another boy who is a junior in college, and my daughter is 15. She's a sophomore in high school. And uh, so, uh, and I've been um, trying to be involved with them, so I am a volunteer uh, with a lot of things. I was a Boy Scout leader for many years. I have two Eagle Scouts, which is very exciting. I was a Girl Scout leader. You can't do for the boys and leave your daughter out. Um, and then, of course, things like uh, uh, band parent involvement. We just finished our big fundraiser uh, Saturday night for the band program, who, of course, can't, you know, some people can't help but get in charge of things. So it's run like a real uh, well-documented project now <laughs> um, with jobs, descriptions, and roles, and responsibilities, and deadlines, and status meetings, and notes. And they, so, um, so that's what I was doing Saturday night, and then you get up and fly. So there's... You know, I, I guess you give up a lot of sleep. <laughs> so I want to introduce a new term because I think the word balance is absolutely the wrong thing to think about. And I call this term managed disequilibrium because face it, our life is that, right? And what we do, I think the stories that you've just heard of uh, my esteemed panelists, is that we do a really good job of managing that disequilibrium because you never know with kids, and I have two boys, 13 and nine, what's gonna hit next. And I shared this story earlier. I was flying out to Roanoke, Virginia a couple of weeks ago, and R Roanoke is regional, right? And you can imagine, I live in Chicago, so there's a lot of frequency of flights, but when you fly into Roanoke, you fly in the morning and you fly in the evening. So the flight that morning, it was a Monday morning, was at 7 a.m. So I was up at, oh, dark, 100, right? Anyway, or had to be up at that early. And, um, you know, we all put the kids to bed at night, and I got the, Mom, we don't want you to go. Please don't go. And my husband looking at me with puppy dog eyes. I hate it when you leave. And I'm like, guys, I'm going to be gone for two days. You can handle it. It's fun. You can, you know, wear your underwear, and I'm not going to be around. Um, so sure enough, right, in this managed disequilibrium of my world, at midnight, my youngest comes in and slowly comes and taps my husband on the shoulder and says, Daddy, I threw up, right? So any parent who has kids knows when they throw up, right, it's like a bomb has gone off in your house. And so from midnight until the limo arrived at 5 o'clock, I was in this, should I go, should I stay, should I go, should I stay? And, you know, my husband looks at me and says, we've got it, right? But <laughs> I could tell he was lying through his teeth. Um, so, <laughs> again, it really, it's, it, you know, you never know what's going to happen. And you, you do, as everyone has, say, has said here, rely on a support structure. And I'm very fortunate. Um, my husband is a school teacher. And so just by choice of career, he's the steady. And I'm very lucky in that he is not only, you know, the one that's there at 3.15 when the kids get home. He's a phenomenal cook and really manages the household. Um, and I know that difference when I come home and I'm home early and I have to do, like, household tasks. I'm not so good at them. But it works for us, right? And you figure out what makes, you know, it work and um, how you best can manage that disequilibrium in our nonlinear lives that we live. Actually, that, that reminds me. My husband's a school teacher also, which gives him all the summers off. In fact, you get a lot of shock when you say, um, one parent, um, consultant, travels all the time. One parent's a school teacher, doesn't take another job in the summer, stays home on all school days off, which today is one of them. They're off today, having fun, and, um, you know, and, and they go, oh, what a nice family. And then you go, and mom travels and dad stays home. And they look at you kind of funny. 
So Elizabeth, this disequilibrium or this story, was this when you were with Allstate or when you were traveling? At a, it, no, this consulting? is recent. So this was a couple of weeks ago, actually, um, at Allstate. And I don't travel. Interesting, you know, just kind of a, a parallel to that story. Um, my kids love it when I'm home from work. And, and I, I have the flexibility every so often I try to work, home, work from home on Fridays or, you know, I'll pick a day to work from home. And the kids love it. And I, I'm always confused. I'm like, you guys are gone, right? You leave at 7.30, 8 o'clock in the morning, and you're not home until 3. And it, my son said it to me the other day. He's like, Mom, just knowing that you're home and you're there to greet me makes my day. And so, okay, right? As a parent, I'm like, oh, God, stop <laughs> laying the guilt on me. But, you, you know, so you, you figure out ways to kind of compensate. Because I, you know, and I think it was, Teresa, you said that um, from a friendship standpoint, I think that's something, too, that I have m missed out on. And my, um, my community, and I think Cindy and I were talking about this in advance of the panel, is a community made up of mostly moms who do not work outside of the house. And I've found it very difficult to connect in those circles. And as hard as I try, it just doesn't seem to work. And I find sometimes you know, a little something will squeak out from one of them in terms of, and I don't want to say judgmental, but they'll say something about how I manage myself, my career, and, and those are people that are, you know, we're really good friends with in terms of our kids are good friends. So it's, it's, it's difficult sometimes, and I often think about what effect that has on my kids, and seeing that, you know, they have other friends whose parents or whose moms don't work, and kind of what that means, but you know, in the end, I know it was the right choice for me. Even if I had the ability to stay home, I don't think I would want to. It's just kind of how my DNA is and how I'm wired. So we, we talked a little bit about some of the hard choices, the friendships, the missing events. Um, my hard choice, I am always on the edge of a nervous breakdown <laughs> because I feel, I don't, I won't say I live paycheck to paycheck, but I live month to month. When it's your own business, it's project to project. And if you don't show up, you don't get paid and you're losing more than just a week's worth of income. So my disequilibrium um, happened Thursday morning with a phone call. My husband's best friend passed away. Um, it was quite sudden. We knew it was going to be in the next three months. And I said, okay, plan A, B, and C. The only one I don't know what I will deal with is if it happens during TDWI. So, um, and this friend went home to visit family in England. So he could not fly back here. So he died in England. So the funeral's in England. My husband's alone. Um, going through this, and I had to make a decision. Do I come here? I, you know, there's 40, 50 people who have booked their flights to take my class tomorrow. It, so it's them, it's a paycheck, and it's a hard choice. Add to it, what do I do with my kids? Well, it's um, President's Day weekend. My son was supposed to go visit his grandparents in Florida. We live in New Jersey. So he was kind of taken care of. I asked my dad, booked him a ticket to fly back with my son today and stay with both the kids tonight. My son calls me when I land here. They canceled his flight. <laughs> I'm like, what? So you're on the next flight, right? No, it's President's Day. All the flights are full from Florida to Newark. So he's missing school tomorrow. My daughter is alone tonight. It sucks. My, my neighbor will at least get her to school. Um, but it's a hard choice, so I feel like we're always living on the edge of me ready to say, screw this, I want a 9 to 5 job, <laughs> or 9 to 8 in one town. That's why I was curious, Elizabeth, if this happened when you were consulting or not. So, and I use the F word more than I should, but never in a class. <laughs> so those are my hard choices. <laughs> um, one of the things... I've learned over the years is to just be easy on myself when it comes to things around the house. Christmas tree came down February 9th. <laughs> Paid the nanny to take it down. <laughs> not kidding. Not kidding. I got, I was like, we have, we, all the kids are in school now. And, um, so we don't have a nanny on regular hours. Um, but I have this, um, woman, she's kind of like an aunt in law and she's a home health aide, but um, she's kind of like on call. And I just SOS'd her. I text her, and I was like, 
it's February, the tree's not down, I need your help, you know, and because it was fake, it was fake, yeah, we were no fire hazard, so, and that's kind of how I, I often say, especially during this um, December through April time frame when we have this huge, you know, basketball commitment that I juggle, that my schedule is like a house of cards, and so one thing goes wrong, and I have a spreadsheet. I manage our life in this massive spreadsheet um, with all what's going on with all the six kids and the, the different events. And um, one thing goes out of place, and it's like the whole the whole plan just kind of like blows up. And sometimes you're just like, you know, you just want to just go back to bed, you know, when that happens. Um, but, and you, but you don't go back to bed. No. And sleep. I didn't mention sleep. I mentioned friends. But, yeah, I mean, sleep is another thing that you definitely give up because when things like that happen, you know, if you have to leave work for an hour or two, which I sometimes can do, um, you know, I am not, it's not that I'm missing work. I'm at work from 10 to 12 at night as a result and missing sleep, so. I have no hard choices. I didn't put up any Christmas decorations this year. First time ever. <laughs> not, not a one. My daughter put up a little cutout snowflake. I said, that's good. I'm good with that. <laughs> it was wonderful. Try it next year. Don't put anything. My my son, on, on the day after Christmas, he says, look, Mom, you're ahead of the game. 364 days, and you already got the tree up. <laughs> the, the hard, you know, the, it, we're starting to sound a little whiny. The, 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 yeah, the, there are hard, we, you guys all know. You've, you've been through it as much as we have, but there is, there is, there are also these wonderful choices. Um, my friends are actually here at TVWI. I guess that's kind of sad in some ways, but my, my I get to see my friends five times a year. Um, it, it's nice. Uh, I have some very, very deep friends. A lot of you are in this room. I've known you for years, um, and I think that's probably one of the best things that ever happened to me. I never would have met you. I never would have known you. Cheers to you, Paul. Uh, I, and that's, that's probably one of the best things that's ever happened to me. I have friends all over the world. It seems like the, it doesn't matter what city I go to, what country I go to, I know somebody there. And I'm not afraid to call them and say, hey, I'm headed, or email, actually email is the way to go these days. I'm headed in your direction. Free up a night and let's go have dinner. And I think that's something that, that I never, I, I know I never would have had if I hadn't had the job that I have. So even though there are some negatives, certainly there are, there are big negatives, but there are also some very real positives. I'm in an indus industry that is absolutely on fire. I'm in an industry that is the most innovative industry, I think, of all of the technologies. I can't think of anything more innovative in this area. I will talk about that a little bit later on when I get to my, to my wish list. My daughter actually does like me. <laughs> she actually does like to travel with me. She takes a lot of advantage when she's available to go travel with me. And now that she's in college, the best thing, you guys haven't quite, well, you're almost there, but the best thing about having Jess in college is that my husband now travels with me. By the way, I didn't mention he runs my company. <clears throat> Now, there's a, there's a work-life balance. We work for the same company. You know, but when he has to leave, his boss is pretty understanding. <laughs> oh, I don't. Well, I was just thinking about some of my hard choices, and one of the things I think I learned is definitely to ask for help. So we have a, a nanny, too, and after school, so that's been a tremendous amount of help. And actually, I have some working moms in my neighborhood, so we kind of have a little network and actually share our nanny and rely on each other to look after the kids if we have emergency situations, so I'm very fortunate that way. To, and I, I was just thinking about my career, and, and I also have a global team, so I have the chance to travel globally. I just got back from Poland. That was also a lot of logistics. I happened to leave on a, a holiday weekend, so I had to get a nanny, and my husband and other son was out of town on a Boy Scout trip. So a lot of arranging to do in advance and kind of thinking through all those logistics ahead of time with having somebody to come watch the kids. But I, I kind of concluded I just can't have it all. I can't be at every event. Um, that the kids have, but I have to kind of pick which ones and really enjoy those every single time. So I think that's some of what I've learned. One of the things about being gone uh, and having my husband home is that you have to, again, give yourself a break. And um, I'll admit, sometimes I'm a little jealous 
um, especially now that it's my husband and my daughter, they have a great relationship. And she's a ba avid basketball player, and he used to coach her when she was younger, and so they're all about basketball, and they watch basketball, they talk basketball, you know, they drive to practice. I mean, it's all about basketball. And um, in fact, I'd been home for several weeks, and my daughter was asking, so when are you going to be going away again? <laughs> and 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 well, she's 15, but um, <laughs> but she but but when I left, she did jump up and say, "Oh, you've got to hug me. You can't just leave." But um, but you have to. Uh, I, I guess that instead of saying, "Gosh, I feel bad," we get along. We do uh, some things that that are not basketball. But how wonderful for her to have the opportunity to have that kind of a relationship with her dad, and that sh my kids have all had the benefit of two very involved parents instead of just one. So, you know, and that's good. So you, you need to just let it happen and, and it's okay. Any hard choices or feel like you you know, I think that, um, it, you know, every day is about choice. And, uh, you know, I echo a lot with um, what everyone has said. I, I think what just the whole, um, with my husband and his role with my kids, um, it, it it's an experience that they will have that not many of their friends share with, the relationship that they have with their dad. And, um, you know, I'm lucky right now. They still really, really love mom. Um, the older one in my relationship is always going to be different than the younger one. He's a lover, right? He loves on me, and I love on him, so it's, it's a little bit different. So I think he'll be that way when he's 35, even though, you know, at nine he's still little, if you will. Um, so, you know, I look at it and say, I, yeah, I'm, I'm blessed, and it, and it works for us. We do things um, in terms of our time together, and actually we've taken a little bit of break now that it's gotten cold, um, but every morning at 10 till 5 a.m., we're out walking together. And we never really thought it was any big deal, right? We'll, we'll go out and we'll walk for, you know, 30 minutes. And a lot of people would say, wow, that's really cool. You must talk a lot about stuff. Right, and we didn't think about it until everyone who we shared it with said, "That's really cool." Whether it was the cold weather, or we were sick, or something like that, and we're like, "We really miss that time together because we did talk through things." It's amazing you're walking fast when it's you know the wind is it's like ten degrees below zero, and you're kind of trucking along. Um, but it you know has allowed us to to connect, and you know you do things to make it work. Um, and, and you decide what's what's important. And for me, uh, it's important that I'm involved not only at work with the job that I'm there and paid for, but my other contribution and pay it forward. And I'll talk a little bit about that. I think there might be a slide that will show a little bit later my role leading the women's resource group, as well as community. I've gotten very involved. I have this kind of political bone in my body. I don't know. Maybe someday I'll be a senator. I don't know. Right? I say you never know. Um, so I've, I've given back to my community and other things that make me feel like I'm contributing beyond just, you know, where I think it is necessary. So um, are there choices? Yeah, but, you know, I choose the things in my discretionary time that are important to me and make me feel um, that I'm, you know, meeting the objectives that are important to me. Thank you. So it sounds like everyone here is happy with the choices. There have been hard choices, but you're happy with them. And for sure having a supportive spouse has helped. 